What's going on guys? This is Mike V, Detroit Borg, with a look at OS 10.8 or Mountain Lion. So no longer called Mac OS 10, it's just OS 10. So Mountain Lion is coming out in the middle of the summer, and this is a developer preview that we're going to take a look at today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the main features. So new in Mountain Lion is the Messages app, which is essentially a successor to iChat, which finally adds iOS's iMessaging to the IM client. This means that in addition to AIM, Jabber, Yahoo, and Google Talk, you can add your iMessage account. So you can now message an iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, or another Mac right from the app. And it all stays synced, so conversations on one device will carry right over to the Messages app on your Mac. You can also add photos or video to your messages simply by dragging and dropping them from your computer. Now this only works with verified iMessage email addresses or phone numbers, so you can't text message everybody unless they are using iMessage on their iOS 5 device or Mac. And just like the iMessaging app, you can see if they are writing back or if a message has been delivered. And finally, you can launch a FaceTime conversation right from the app. Reminders also comes over from iOS. This means that reminders will now stay synced with your Mac as well as iOS. So from the Mac, I can add a to-do list item and it will appear nearly instantaneously on my iPhone or iPad. If I check off the item as it's completed, it will now appear on both devices under the completed tab. You can also modify reminders by tapping the eye icon or navigate your reminders in a calendar view. Notes is another iOS app to make it to the Mac, but with OS 10, you can add photos by dragging and dropping them from the desktop. You can also pin individual notes to your desktop like a post-it note just by double clicking on the item. And of course your notes will stay synced across all devices while you're logged into your iCloud account. So you can add notes or make changes on any device and the changes will propagate to everything. Notification Center brings iOS's notification aggregator onto the Mac and is my favorite new feature of Mountain Lion. Just like with iOS, notifications from all apps are aggregated into a list which you can bring up and hide with a swipe. In the Mac's case, swiping two fingers across the trackpad will bring up the list, or you can tap the notifications icon in the upper right corner. In the notification tray, you can swipe through and tap on any of the notifications to launch the app. Right now, this is limited to certain apps like Mail, Messages, Reminders, Updates, FaceTime, Calendar, and Game Center, but more will be added as apps take advantage of it. Notifications also adds banners, which you can click on or dismiss. And just like with iOS, you have granular control over the notification settings for each app, such as how many items are displayed or the type of banner. In this case, I can choose None, Banner, which will briefly flash the notice and then automatically disappear, or an alert, which will stay on the screen until I open it or dismiss it. Share Sheets is a new sharing architecture built into many OS 10 apps, including Safari, Notes, Reminders, Photo Booth, and iPhoto. This allows you to quickly share photos, links, and more with a variety of accounts like Twitter or Flickr. To add these accounts, all you have to do is go to Settings, go to your Mail Contacts and Calendars, and from there you can now add a variety of accounts such as Twitter, Flickr, Vimeo, and AOL. Once you've added these accounts, you can now click on the share icon from the apps that have it and share content with these accounts. So for example, if I'm in Safari, if I click on the share icon, I have the options that make sense for sharing content from Safari, such as messaging and Twitter. So if I click Twitter, I get this little share sheet with the link and I, I can go ahead and type in my message and send it off. Game Center has also been added to the Mac, which lets you transfer your Game Center account to your Mac using your Apple ID, so you can now continue to meet up with your Game Center contacts, maintain your leaderboard scores, and join multiplayer games no matter what devices are being used. AirPlay Miri now allows you to mirror your Mac's desktop directly on your HCTV via an Apple TV. So if your Mac and Apple TV are sharing the same home network, your Mac will detect the presence of the Apple TV. An AirPlay mirroring icon will then appear in the upper right corner, which will let you activate the feature. Once activated, the icon will go blue, and you can continue to use your Mac while displaying the screen on your Apple TV. So from here, you can browse the web, look at photos, and watch video while streaming both audio and video to your HDTV. This will turn off the audio, however, on your Mac. This works great with services like Hulu, which currently do not have a presence on the Apple TV. You also have the option to switch the resolution pushed to the Apple TV to the native 720p resolution, which will make reading text on the HDTV much easier, but will lower the resolution on your Mac. 
Apple has also instituted Gatekeeper, which is a new security tool that allows the user to limit the type of applications installed and operated on the Mac. The idea is to prevent malicious software from being installed or stopping installed applications that do not have the new Apple security certificate. So from the security settings, you can allow applications to download only from the Mac App Store, Mac App Store, and identify developers which are using the new security certificate, or you can turn it off completely, which allow you to install software from any stores. Other new features include iCloud Setup, which will prompt new OS X installations to log users into their iCloud account to set up their mail, contacts, calendar, Safari, FaceTime, and Mac App Store. iCloud will also finally allow documents to be stored uh, so they can be accessed from iOS or from Mac OS X. So you can basically save files to iCloud or to your local hard drive. Other changes include full width tabs in Safari and the ability to search directly from the address bar. The Launchpad now lets you search apps. The Widgets interface has been updated and can now be organized into folders just like apps. OS X updates are now managed through the Mac App Store, so launching updates launches the App Store. AirPlay devices can now be selected from the audio output options. Addressbook and iCal have been renamed to Contacts and Calendar. And last but not least, we get some new screensavers and a new default wallpaper. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll have more on OS 10.8 in the near future, so stay tuned for that. And I'll see you again in the next video.